Hello everyone. Greetings in the name of One Try on God and welcome to our new show. It's about understanding icons in which we'll be talking about icons and understanding the meaning of icons from orthodox perspective. And uh, my name is Rijo. I'm from Indian Orthodox Church which is also known as the Malangara Orthodox Church founded by St Thomas, one of the six oriental orthodox churches and it's a sister of Coptic Orthodox Church. And I'm quite inclined toward icons. Icons in general, it's a sacred art of Orthodox Church. It plays a very integral part in Orthodox worship and its liturgy, even inside the church as a structure. But what are icons? Icons in a term, as a term, it comes from the Greek terminology that is called icona or eka or eco. That means representations, pictures, form, any sort of pictures of any saint, a saint including Christ and Most Holy Theotokos. In the book of Genesis, first book of Genesis, in the first chapter itself, it says that God said, let make man in our image or our icon. And again in the book of New Testament, St. Paul said in the, in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 that Christ is the icon of invisible God or icona of invisible God. It's the same word used in the Old Testament as well as used in the, in the New, Te New Testament. Iconography in Orthodox Church, it plays a very integral part. It's a, it's, a, it's a liturgical part of Orthodox Church. And why? Orthodox Churches has given a great elevation for, uh, for contemplation and for visualization. Even when we are reading a Bible, we make characters inside our mind, inside our thoughts. We visualize each and every character. So we are creating an icon inside our mind itself. An Orthodox Church is giving an area as, a, as an iconographer and as an artist. I can represent that whatever I'm contemplating, whatever I'm visualizing. So as an iconographer, if I want to preach about Christ, I can depict Christ, I can preach about Christ through the artistic way. And inside Orthodox Church, we have this area. Orthodox Church is using iconography as a teaching tool. And that's why, that's why we say that icons are visual gospel. Similarly, like Bible is a written gospel, it's a written scripture. Icons are visual scriptures. As the word transfer through the ears, the painting silently through the images. And by these two means, mutually accompanying one another, we receive the same knowledge, one and at the same thing. St. Basil the Great said this sentence regarding iconography. Now, what is the base of iconography? What is, what is giving the iconography the whole meaning, the foundation itself? I believe that the foundation of iconography is the incarnation. The word became flesh when the undescribable God became describable. So the Incarnation and as well as Transfiguration. Transfiguration in the Mount Tabor when Christ transfigured. Like Saint Athanasius of Alexandria on the, in the book of On Incarnation, he said that even on the cross, he did not hide himself. Rather, he made all creation witness to the presence of his maker. Among all the creation, among all, the, he made witness himself. The very meaning of icon has uh, has its foundation, the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, when the Word became flesh, as it is written in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, that Christ is the image, the icon of the invisible God. It is because that, and also, and also in transfiguration, in Mount Tabor, when Christ transfigured, and that gave a lot of support for iconography, and which is also used in the whole process. For example, an iconographer, one of the major differences between icons and a painting is the process. In a normal painting, we always grow, go from light to darkness. For example, in oil painting, we start with light color, then we make the shades. But in iconography, it's, and it's exactly opposite. We follow darkness to light. As it is written in the book of Malachi, the people who were living in the darkness, they saw a great light. So we follow this step of darkness to light. We make the darkness and we go to light. So it's, it's a supporting thing for transfiguration, how the transfiguration happened, we end, and, and, it, and it supports the whole iconography process. Mm -hmm. 
as I said that incarnation and transfiguration is the most important part or it's the foundation of iconography. If Christ would have not incarnated or if he would have not transfigured himself in Mount Tabor, if he would have not revealed himself, then I feel like it, it, it would have been really hard. It would have been, in a sense, it would have been impossible to re depict him. Because by becoming, he was undescribable and he became describable. So now being an artist, now being an iconographer, if I want to preach about Christ, now preaching gospel is not only about from the written gospel, it can be preached through the visual gospel also. So being an iconographer, it would have been my responsibility to preach about Christ through the icons, through the visual gospels. Now, this transfiguration part, this transfiguration part of, uh, of darkness to light, it has been used in, even in the process, even in, when we are making the face, when we are making the robe, when we are making any, even in the sceneries. Because while making so from darkness to light, by making this relief, we are opening a window. And that's why icons are also sometimes known as windows to heaven. Because when you look into an icon, it takes you to a completely different environment in a completely different world. And in the whole process of iconography, there are two important characters I see. The one who is making the icon and the one who is going to view the icon. And both are important. So one who is making the icon, he is keeping himself in a fasting, in prayer, and he is depicting the icon. He is depicting the picture itself. And when the person who is going to view the icon, when he sees the icon, the whole dedication, the whole window is being opened to him and it reflects back to him. So that's the beauty of windows to heaven. My personal experience, what, what made me go towards iconography, when I, first, when I was first introduced to iconography, the one of the first thing that, that pushed me was, was the, how, how the icons look. They might be completely not that beautiful or it might, they might not be completely perfect. But when I look into an icon, when it started pulling me or not pulling me, but in a sense started taking me to another world, it really pushed me and to learn about icons, to understand icons. That was one of the most beautiful things that I learned about icon. And as I said in the beginning that there is a great difference between painting and an icon. And one of the differences that I like a lot is when we make a painting, we write our names at, at the end, that art, art by a reacher or art by someone or made by someone. In icons, we are not supposed to do that. Why? Because at the end of the day, at the end of the whole process, the icon was not made by me. It was made by God. He is the creator. I am not the creator. So that was one of the most important things that, that striked me, that whenever I'm making an icon, it's not only Rijo who is making an icon, but Rijo is being used by someone to make that whole icon. It's same like Bible. In Bible, we say that it's, it's word of God. You don't say that it's word of uh, any apostle or any prophet. Together, we say it's word of God. So similarly, icons are not supposed to be a product of a person, of, of a product of Rijo, but it's a product of God. It's a, it's a creation of God. So that beauty, anyhow, we, we Orthodox Church, we are still able to keep that dignity within iconography. And that, that is something that strikes me a lot. So everything is about the end product. But in icons, we are not concerned about the end product. We are concerned about the whole process. We are concerned about the world, we are concerned about the colors, we are concerned about the layers, the seven layers. So everything has a meaning. Everything has a meaning and everything has something to reflect, something to meditate. And that is what personally pushed me or personally attracted me towards iconography. And as I said about meaning, like there are meanings like uh, the one thing that I do is, is about the layers in face. I used to keep seven layers. Keeping, remembering that the seven days of creation or the seven sacraments of Orthodox Church. So even when I'm making a brush stroke, so it's reminding me something about my belief. Another beautiful thing is about the icon of Most Holy Theotokos and how, how I can make the icon of Theotokos in such a way that it will reflect for me the whole teaching about intercession. So I, I like depicting my belief, my belief in Orthodox Church through icons and that's the most beautiful part. 
And I think that's the reason that why we believe, we, we say that iconography is a sacred art and it's a windows to heaven. I hope in the coming sessions, in the coming uh, series, we will be learning a lot. We will be knowing a lot about icons and I will try my level best to make you all understand, make my point. And in the coming seasons, we will be learning about uh, the Orthodox worship space, that is icons in the Orthodox worship space. And followed by, we'll be learning about the clouds of witnesses. It's something related to intercession. Then we'll be learning about, we'll be knowing about Virgin Mary and the most holy Theotokos icon. And if possible, we will also, we all, we will also discuss about the defense of icons. Thank you.